Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and this is a relatively new project that I started. I've been meaning to make one of these. I saw, I think it was on Hackaday, um, someone made a clock using one of these little tiny analog meters. Not this exact model, but something similar. And basically uh, they printed their own uh, scale on the back and uh, they had one for uh, minutes and se uh, hours and whatnot, maybe one for seconds, I can't remember. It was quite a while ago that I saw this, but I always wanted to make something similar. And these meters can be had for, I think, a little over a dollar each. Um, so they're really cheap. These are like the smallest, cheapest ones I could find. Um, and basically this is made to measure um, DC up to, I think, like 25 volts. Uh, but so there's a few caveats with the project. Um, well, for starters, these are fairly easy to open. I'll show you in a second modifications I had to do on these units. So I'm using a uh, an external serial uh, DAC chip. Uh, it's a digital to analog converter. It's a uh, microchip uh, MCP4922. It's a dual DAC. So it has a two channel output so I can do one for hours and one for minutes. And if I wanna add seconds, I can you know add a second chip or whatever. Anyway, for now, I'm just going to do hours and minutes. And um, basically, I'm driving this from an Arduino there. You can drive this from anything. And it's just a three-line serial connection there. And so as you can see right now, I just have it uh, just kind of incrementing in blocks here. And there is some sort of, uh, well, there's a spring effect, obviously, on the needle. So it's not quite very smooth, uh, though I can change this very easily. Here's uh, just some sample code that I've written. I have it incrementing by uh, steps of 50. But if I change this down to something like 20, I can get it to go a lot smoother. And we'll just update that and hopefully it'll compile and re-upload. So it should be flashing to the chip right about now. And let's see. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit smoother. And if I further decrease this um, so that it only increments in the increments of 10, let's just see. Interesting thing when it reprograms, it kind of just sticks and then it resets. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of wobble there, but yeah, definitely if I go through and um, mess around with this, I can get this just to increment by one. It'll be very slow, but uh, we can change just for fun. Let's just play around with this. So I'm going to increase the, the update rate and I'm going to decrease the number of steps. And it should go much slower and much smoother. Yeah, you can see it's much slower and it's much smoother. So this is likely how I'm going to actually drive. I'm not going to drive it so staccato like it was before. I'm just going to have it... Um, you know, gradually increase. I'm going to have to calculate um, for a given range uh, what the division should be because it looks like this is actually nonlinear. Um, when you drive it with a like a linear ramp function on the input voltage, uh, the display isn't necessarily uh, linear. So, you know, half the uh, maximum deflection voltage doesn't necessarily equal half on the display, unfortunately. Uh, but that's a great thing of having a microprocessor. I can actually program this, um, well, this guy, um, have a, a map basically of, you know, what one o'clock would be, you know, uh, 0.5 volts or whatever, you know. Uh, so anyway, the big caveat that I have though is um, this chip that I'm using specifically, it derives the uh, reference voltage for the analog output from its supply voltage, which at maximum is a little over 5 volts. I think it's like 5.5 or 6 volts. Uh, so I'm limited to that. But these meters, um, only they go up to 25 volts. If, if I were to put 5 volts, it would only go up to that 5 point right here. Um, so I wouldn't get full deflection. So in order to modify this, I've actually opened the meter. And let me just uh, set this camera down a sec and show you guys. Okay, so here's one of the meters, and there's just tape holding it on. You can peel it off partially so that you can um, remove the uh, protective cover here. And you can see this is just a sticker. So I can easily remove that and then print my own. And um, I'll take measurements on this so I know what the, the full scale deflection is, where the points to draw on the uh, new label. 
and I'll um, I'll probably have mine curved because I think that looks a bit nicer and I'll have uh, hours and minutes marked off on it and so yeah that's easily replaceable now you can see here there is a single resistor there there we go and uh, it's a green brown red gold so what that's gonna be like uh, what is that 510 five point what that be 5.1k something like that anyway um, so this is actually setting so how this works is um, there I'm guessing this is well it's current fed obviously it's a coil uh, but um, by changing the resistance in series with uh, one of the terminals uh, you're changing the current so you're decreasing it so they specifically calculated this value uh, so that this actually isn't zeroed all the way. Anyway, they specifically calculate the resistance value such that um, full scale deflection would be about 25 volts. Uh, but I actually want to decrease that. So I could either recalculate the resistor and try to pull this out or solder this well. But I've actually found that if I just take this resistor and I twist it so I short the resistor out. This is really hard to do with one hand. So something like this. So now basically it's shorted out the resistor and so the terminal just goes straight through now. If I put about one volt, it'll go full scale deflection. So all I'm doing in my software for my DAC is I'm resetting it so that um, at maximum it'll output about a volt. And then that roughly equals um, about 850. I've uh, done some experimentation. Um, if you if you put the binary value of 850, that'll roughly bring the, bring the near the needle right about here. And so any percentage of that, you'll be able to control uh, the full scale there. So that's uh, pretty useful to do instead of having to you know get a separate uh, reference supply on the output or do some other weird scaling things. Um, this will work actually a lot nicer. I can just adjust in code now. Uh, so yeah, anyway, this all works. And now we can see this is a three volt cell. Um, if I did this right, you should be able to get full deflection. Now the problem is these darn resistors are so tiny. And I could just solder that and short that out manually, but I don't care that much. Yeah, there we go. You can see three volts way deflects it pretty much to the end stop. So yeah, this guy will work as uh, as I'd like now. Um, so if you buy one of these meters and it's a different voltage range, you can easily modify it that way by either changing that resistor value or by shorting it out like I did so that you can get easily uh, low voltage full scale deflection. And the DAC chip that I'm using is actually, uh, I believe it's 12 bit. So basically you give it a number between 0 and 4095 and it will range its output voltage from 0 to 5 volts, just about. Uh, so anyway, this is sort of an ongoing project. I'm going to make this into a clock. And so there will be two of these displays and it will just sit there and display the time. And I'm also going to put a uh, an LED behind here to backlight it so that it will be visible at night. And yeah, so not obviously not as easy to uh, to look at the time as one of these like digital type clocks that I've built, but um, it's kind of a neat conversation piece. And I like building clocks. So, and in addition to that, actually speaking of clocks, I got this tiny little LED display, and this is a serially driven uh, four digit LED display. And each of those dots that you see is actually a little tiny red LED. And this guy is a HCMS uh, 2915. Sorry about that. That was out of shot. And um, I got this guy, I believe, from a seller that's based in Russia. Uh, so, yeah, this is really cool. I might want to get some of them. These are expensive, though. These guys are, I think, like 12 bucks a pop, um, about. And they're pretty rare because they're discontinued, obviously. So I might pick up a few more of these and make a little tiny scrolly uh, clock. It'll basically be similar to this guy, but obviously much smaller. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and this is sort of random clock making uh, at its finest. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.